Good morning. Well, now it's a bit of a risk. I'm here on a uh, Dooling's line, and this is normally a cellular vortex where you can't get any sort of service at all. However, right now it seems that I'm getting a little bit. Look, there you go. There's the river, and, and uh, here's the main road up here. Hang on now, I'll show you. Sorry, I didn't mean to make that jiggly. My God, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Here we are now, April 7th. Ah, got the date today. April 7th. And uh, the pond is open, of course, as you know, because it's been open most of... Uh, i got to slow down. I remember now, once I start walking, there's no stopping. It was open most of the... Most of the winter, actually. Uh, I prefer the side-by-side. -side. I prefer sitting down and having a little talk with you. Uh, I got a new hat. Remember the hat I told you about? Uh, the lady... Uh, Brenda Rose uh, uh, insulted my hat, and Dana, um, I'm going to say Hillier, I think it is, uh, dropped the gauntlet to Brenda and said, you see if you can do better, and she did. Here it is. Isn't this wonderful? Lovely. The wool came from Uruguay, from a women's co-op in Uruguay, and uh and evidently, says you, because it's a long time since you heard that story. So there you go. But uh, well worth the wait. Lovely. Anyway, uh, so here we are now. Today is a large day, and I'm going to tell you why. Today, I'm going up to Fairyland, which I love. I love Fairyland, and I love that drive up to Fairyland because it's so pretty and scenic, uh, unless it's snowing and dark, uh, in which case loses its luster uh but i'm going up to baltimore school today my god this is exciting i'm going up to baltimore school to give uh to take orders for clothing for sensible gear isn't this sensible how wonderful i got to tell you there's a dog going off her head over there uh how wonderful indeed it's so thrilling to uh be moving forward you know and out of covid and and well not yet i understand but uh can you hear that, I wonder? Anyway, um, so that's exciting. That's happening today. I'm going up to uh, up to Fairyland, and I'm going to see Jacinta McGraw and all the uh, parents up there and the students. And, uh, and you know what? We've created some beautiful, um, beautiful apparel for them, so I'm hoping to buy a fortune. So that's great. Uh, what else is new? Okay, so, okay, Lent. How did you make out? I know we're still in Lent, but if I'm going to be honest with you, and I am, I think I'm going to have to go around the house and find the 40 items I talked about there a while ago and give that instead. Because the truth of the matter is I've broken my Lenten vow many times now. It's, uh, we can just say that I haven't done it. Uh, you know, the... The giving up whites for, and I was doing so well. I wouldn't mind, you know, but I can give them up. And I have done. Uh, perhaps chose the wrong street here this morning uh, because it's quite busy. I have given them up uh, for long times, but no, by the moment you say, oh, no, it's for Lent. That's it all out the door. And so anyway, I hauled into Tim Hortons the other day and I said, I'll have a medium ice cap, please. <laughs> I remember the police. So anyway, uh, the Lenten vow for me has gone to pass. But what about you? How has the Lenten vow been for you? If you've done it, indeed. Uh, what else is new? Now, let me see. You know, I was thinking about a... I was thinking about a sensible tip for you. Because, you know, we've gone through the cloves. We know about the cloves. We've gone through the uh, soap, uh, the cucumber. I, I tried some pink soap as well. Uh, you know, it all gives you a little lift, you know, a little bit of nice body bath, body, body, bubble bath rather. Uh, that All of that's nice. Just look, we you wouldn't know. Look at the traffic. Well, uh, okay, admittedly, I turned it too late. It was, only, it was only one car, but it was quite busy there for a second. 
But anyway, uh, so I've told you all about that. And I was getting a ride up because I, I was a little bit late this morning putting on my lipstick and such. And I said to my brother, Ray, I said, Ray, give me a lift along, will you? Yeah. Ray's always very ready to help. And he really is. And so, yeah, well, all of my family are, thank God. But anyway, he gave me a lift along up to the Ruby line. And I thought I'll walk back then with the wind in my back and then it won't be as bad on your ears. And so anyway, I said, Ray, I need a tip for this morning. He said, I got a tip for you. I said, okay, go on. He said, my cat uh, likes to watch the TV. And so this is for all those people who have cats, perhaps dogs as well, but say to the lady, she doesn't care for it so much because I think she might be a little tiny bit blind. But anyway, he said, my cat likes to watch the TV. So he said, I used to have on the aquarium. Well, he said, when you put on YouTube, there is a, um, there's a channel there called the bird channel. Well, do you think that cat looks at that? Oh yes, he said, that cat will look at that. And, and when it's not on, she'll turn to me and go meow. In other words, hello, here, waiting for the, waiting for the birds. And looking at the birds like this sort of carry on. It's like a movie. And so anyway, my point is this. You just don't know what's on YouTube. Now, I will tell you that I was going to give you this tip as well. I'm going to cross the road now so I don't get knocked down. And what about the jacket? Certainly they could see me. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I thought, well, there's been no good in a snowstorm, but lovely at night. Anyway, I was going to tell you because this week I found myself desperately attracted to these little dog videos. You know, uh, the reasons you want a golden retriever. And then the, the puppy, it, oh, it throws in the puppy. So it hooks you right in. And so then it shows all the little cute little puppy things. You know, it doesn't mention at all about the hair, you know, or the slobber. Uh, none of that, all, only all the love. So if you want a little lift, go to YouTube, Google golden retriever puppy, and watch the little videos. They're as sweet as anything. If that doesn't bring joy to your heart, I don't know what will. And if you got a cat, put on the birds. So, okay. Okay, I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking about what to say to you today, you know, what kind of story to tell. And anyway, years ago, my Uncle Joe, look coming, will you? For God's sake, I'm taking my life into my hands. That's that big eight wheel coming down the track. I mean, just your loving daddy ain't coming back and I'm moving on. My Uncle Joe uh, was my Aunt Molly's husband. He's passed now, so has she. Uh, but Molly was a rough, she was the rough aunt. We all, I think we all have this aunt who uh, who has a bit of a rough voice and, and doesn't mind cursing, uh, you know, and she can curse and get away with it. That's the key. It's, you know, many people can curse, but many people not shouldn't curse. You know, like some people can curse, and I'm really good at it, and she was. And so anyway, I shan't go down too far down that path. However, when my nephew was home to be christened, when he was an infant, he was in crying. He had a great big square mouth. Ah, this sort of carry on. And Kelly was, oh, baby, that's old oh, baby this and old oh, baby. And he's, you know, he's a masterpiece. I breastfed him for 10 years, you know, that sort of thing. And so anyway, <laughs> Molly steps in. And when he started in crying in the room, so uh, let's say that, let's say that we're in the kitchen, you and I. And right here, right next to us is the living room, but there's a wall sort of uh, partitioning it. Uh, and he was right on the other side of the wall on the couch. Uh, and you could hear the, this sort of carry on. And Molly said, I'll take care of it. And so she looked in uh, around the wall, just, she didn't, she didn't do a thing other than move her head around the wall. And she said, knock off. And, and the knock off got caught right in her throat you know, because she, her voice was ravaged from cigarettes. And so I don't even know if I captured it. Knock off. It was this sort of thing. And Andrew went, ah! 
<laughs> that was that was the end of the crown. She really had a way about it. But anyway, her husband Joe was a tremendous man. He might need his muffler on. He was a tremendous man, and this is the last trip on the Ghouls High main road, by the way. We're not doing this anymore. It's too distracting. Anyway, uh, you know, he was very good with the children and and years before he died, he was telling me stories because I do screechings, as you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, but I do. I have been doing them now for, well, since 1999. Uh, so make it up, whatever that is, 23 years. My God bless the time is gone. Uh, so anyway, and he knew I did. And so he was telling me about rum running and he was a rum runner. But further to that, he was telling me about a story. He said, Chile, years ago, he said, you know, we didn't have any money. He said, we had lived in Cape Royal. He said, and there was an old woman up on the road who had a store and she would sell candy and she'd sell everything. She, she, she had everything for, for the neighbors for the neighborhood sort of thing, you know, for the community. And uh, mom sent me up with just enough money to get some kerosene. He said, and the old woman had to go in, I forget her name now, he probably told me, uh, had to go in and get the kerosene in the back. And when she went in, I noticed, he said, all the candy. Oh, Sheila, he said, and I was hungry. He said, and I didn't, I knew I didn't have enough money. And he said, and I looked at that candy and I could have easily taken it. He said, and she'd never know, but he said, I wouldn't take it because he said, you know, I, I just wouldn't do it. He said, you know, she's got to make a living too. And, and they, she had to pay for it. So he said, I left, I got the kerosene. We just had enough money for the kerosene. I got the kerosene, I left. And he said, I, I never forgot it. He said, one year after I came back from rum running, he said, we were doing well then. He said, and I went up to see mom and said, mother, is the uh, old store still up there? And she said, oh, yes, 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 Joe, still up there. He said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run up now and see old Mrs. whatever her name was. And so anyway, he did. He went up and he said, Mrs. Oh, God, I'm just... anyway, Mrs. He said, years ago, he said, I remember he's coming to, to you and getting kerosene she said yes joe you're doing that for years honey and he said yeah well he said i remember one time he said it was winter and we were getting the kerosene and i just had enough money for the kerosene and he said and i saw all these candy and he said no, i was dying to have one he said no i didn't take one oh she said i didn't wouldn't think you would but he said uh, uh, you know i i was half hungry and and wanting one of those candies. She said, Joe, why didn't you tell me? I would have gave you a candy, darling. And he said, no, no, missus. He said, you had to make your living too, you know. So he said, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to buy all these candy, all the candy here in the shop. He said, I'd like to buy them. He said, and I'll put them outside and let the youngsters take them. He said, whoever wants to have a candy can do, can do it, he said, and shouldn't be without. She said, Joe, that's a sin. No, he said, missus, he said, you know, <clears throat> times were tough, but he said, times are better now. So he said, um, that's what I'm going to do. And so, and he did. And he was, he was this sort of a man. He was very kind, uh, kind hearted, you know. And anyway, truck coming. Uh, he was the type of person who said, oh, yes, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, he spoke like this. I'll do it. He said, yes, I'll do it. He said, my thank you box is a bit full, but I'll fit another note in it. <laughs> my my thank you box. So he had a thank you box. He didn't. Uh, but anyway, he used to talk about how full it was. But he said, I'll fit another note. And so this is the kind of person he was. In 2009, I went to see Chris Christopherson. Chris Christopherson then, I don't know. He was 70 odd at that point. He almost must be 100 now. But uh, that's not good math, I know. But make it up. Uh, so anyway... He sang some songs and didn't know half of them. Uh, you know, he um, just sang, sang. Uh, so, for example, take the ribbon from your hair. 
And then the rest of the audience would fill in. So he didn't need to know. Shake it loose and let it fall. And so, and people there were, were true Chris fans. And so anyway, he that night sang a song that reminded me of this story. And the song is called, Here Comes That Rainbow Again. And I, I'd sing it for you if I were in the uh, side by side, but I'm not. And so uh, if you have a chance or if someone can YouTube this and put it in the comments, it's by Chris Christopherson. It was played in the Grapes of Wrath. And it talks about this uh, woman who gave the children candy. And anyway, uh, the truck drivers sort of said, you know, <laughs> that was a lie. Those candy ain't two for a penny. And she said, well, what's it to you? Sort of thing. And uh, then the truck drivers leave, left her a big tip. And she said, hey, you left too much money. He said, what's it to you? And so here comes that rainbow again. And it just reminded me of my Uncle Joe and how important kindness is. So there you go. That's my little story for the day. Okay, now we're coming in on uh, Good Friday soon. Uh, Ward's, Keith, Keith's Takeout, Keith's Diner, had a, uh, had a notice on Facebook about... Uh, and, and it went something like this. It said, news of the uh, Good Friday service will be up soon. <laughs> My sister put up Jody. She said, I thought you were talking about uh, the church service, which was funny. And I thought, fair enough. No, they mean the fish and chips. So are you going to have fish and chips? Because I won't see you next week. And Good Friday is, is it next week? Yes, it is next free week. So I won't see you next week, but Good Friday is next week. Are you going to have fish and chips? I know I am going to. And that's not all. I'd like to say, oh, I'm going to have chocolate now for the first time since Lent started. No, I'm having chocolate for the thousandth time now. I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I went right off the rails altogether. But that's all I can do. I mean, you know, we don't need to get mired down in the blame of it all. That's all we can do. So Good Friday's next week. After that then is uh, the 21st, and that's when I'll be back to you. Before I do that, I will tell you one more little story. My, uh, a couple of friends of mine uh, had moved away, and anyway, and they had been friends for years. It was Brian and, and Danny, Danny Moore. And anyway, they ran into each other up in Toronto, and Brian said, by Danny, he said, I haven't seen you in years. He said, no, he said, how are you doing? And they were both doing so well. He said, look, he said, me and the missus just got a new place. He said, so come over and see it. And he said, yes. He said, I'd love to come over. He said, I'll come over Friday night. He said, sure, how do I get there? And he gave him the address. Now he said, look, with specific instruction, he said, when you get to the door, kick the door open with your foot. He said, and then go to the elevator. He said, and press the button with your left elbow. He said, and then he said, when you press the button with your left elbow up to the fourth floor, then he said, come out, go down the hallway, press the doorbell with your right elbow. He said, yes, all right. He said, what number? He said, 45. He said, 45. He said, yeah, okay. So, and he said, what's all this news about the foot and the elbows? He said, well, surely you're not coming empty handed. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Anyway, there you go. That's it. That's all I got to tell you today. I'm going up to Fairyland. Aren't I marvelous? I can't wait to see how the crowd are up there. And listen to me. I hope you have a wonderful, a wonderful couple of weeks. Uh, one of our, one of our friends from this, from who follows us on here, um, her name is Patricia Lawrence, I think. Patricia Lawrence. She just had a surgery on her shoulder. And I don't know if she's going to watch this this week. But anyway, if you're so inclined, send her a bit of good energy and a little prayer. I hope you're doing well. Love to you.